Hey guys, welcome back. So we are talking about the genetics and the diversification and now we are going to be talking about the class switching or isotype change within the immunoglobulins. So this should be our last lecture on the B cell and immunoglobulin structure and diversity. After this we will go to the uh, immunoglobulin types and immunoglobulin functions. So let's talk about this, the class switching mechanism. So first thing, we have repeated it in our previous lectures, one B cell which is not yet, which is yet immature, which is, which is yet naive, may express IgM and IgD on its surface. What is the reason for this? You would receive this question. I think that for immunology, many of these questions will actually be there or some way, some concept will be there either, either in pathology or, or in genetics or in flow cytometry, some, some, some way or shape or form. So here, the first question is why both of these are there. So let me make quickly, uh, these were the V regions, v, V1 to Vn then we had D regions, D1 to Dn and you know that uh, light chains do not have D regions and that is why light chains, light chains are formed from V and J combinations, that is why light chains do not show junctional diversity and they do, do not show junctional flexibility, neither do they have P and N nucleotides because P and N nucleotides and junctional diversity is only apparent when the D and V combine and when D and J combine, J1 to Jn. So this combination, this combination and this combination creates junctional diversity. But D genes are only contributing about 5 amino acids to the variable region of the heavy chain. So light chain you know has V1 to Vn and then J1 to Jn, Jn meaning whatever number, so let's say 1 to 7, and they do not have D in them. And so they do not show junctional diversity because junctional diversity and flexibility appears here. They also, that means, will not have P and N nucleotides because these are also formed here. Now, what we were talking about is, if I can take one piece of these, so let's say I take V2, D2, and J2 and create the DNA, this is DNA, what is after that? After that we have gotten constant region that is the heavy chain, right? constant region protein mu gene, then we have gotten constant region delta protein genes, then we have gotten constant region gamma 3 constant region gamma 2, constant region gamma 1, actually gamma 1 B and then constant region gamma 1 A, finally we have the epsilon region and alpha region. These all of them will make heavy chains, right? So this will make with Vj, this will make the variable regions of immunoglobulin, right. So in this immunoglobulin, the variable region is going to be made by this group. The heavy chain, the remaining part of the heavy chain here, the constant regions are going to be made by one of them. In the beginning, they both mu and delta, so this will make IgM, this will make IgD, this will make IgG, this is IgE and this is IgA, right, so one of them. But we know that IgM and IgD are simultaneous, so they both, but after that one of them. The other one more thing that we should know before I start discussing how the glass switching occurs is that 
whenever we switch class, so let's say the B cell has moved to start making, let's say there is a bacterial infection, bacteria is normally trigger gamma 3 IgG3 formation. So let's say there is a bacteria that has triggered the IgG3 formation, that means this DNA is removed. So once the DNA is removed, that B cell cannot make that kind of immunoglobulin again ever. So this B cell will first make IgM and IgD, then interleukin 4, interleukin 5, CD40, CD40L, CD28B, B27B, B7, all of those triggers would cause the B cell to change the class. The class switching as we will talk about that in a second, let us say that goes to this class, this is removed, now IgM and IgD is not going to be made by this B cell ever again. So please remember this. Similarly, if you start making IgG1, then you cannot make IgG2 because that gene will have to be removed. Every time you go down this track, previous genes are removed. They are removed and thrown away. They are discarded from the B cell. So once you reach the IgA, if a B cell is making IgA, that B cell can never make any other immunoglobulin ever. However, if a B cell is making IgM, it can make any of the others. So you can go this way, but you cannot come back because every time you go this way, you remove the parts of the genes to go to the next gene set. So this is very different from DNA rearrangement that occurs for the, uh, for the light chain. For heavy chain, you don't rearrange. You don't say, okay, I'm going to pick up the IgA and move that here. No, you remove the other genes. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about it, how the class switching would occur. So for the class switching to work, First thing to know, so let me just make one VDJ here so that I have some space in the board. First thing to remember is that we have intervening segments. Intervening segments are nothing but the, the uh, other segments between the genes. We of course have introns and exons. Exons, exons are really expressing genes. These are the genes that make proteins. Introns are intervening genes. These are genes which are present in there but have no function and we'll splice them out and throw them out. Now let's say this was the mu, C mu gene. This would have a set of base pairs called switch mu. So let me put that here, S mu. Switch mu, switch mu will be needed when we are doing a class switch. Similarly, uh, we'll have delta here, constant delta, and that would have switch delta, base pair. What does that mean? Why are we talking about it? So let's do this. Let's put C epsilon and the C epsilon switch epsilon. Let's say we want this B cell to stop making M and D and start making E. Why would it be doing that? Maybe the B cell is exposed to, or maybe some T cell is exposed to a helminth and it has come to B cell and requesting IgE so it can create, it can kill the helminth. Remember this, that B cell, what immunoglobulin it would switch to? There are multiple factors. We know that IL-4 would make a B cell switch to IgE. We know that I, IL-5 will make a B cell switch to IgA. Similarly, we know that if there is a helminth that has attacked our body, then the IgE switch would occur. If there is a virus that has attacked our body, then IgM would occur, an IgG would occur, and if uh, an IgG1 would occur. And if there is a bacteria that has attacked our body, then IgG3 uh, uh, class switching would occur. So multiple factors, chemical factors, environmental factors, and the type of pathogen, they all decide what kind of class switching would occur. Then also we know that when our body is trying to protect ourselves, what is it doing? Number one, it is trying to opsonize the bacteria and pathogens so that they cannot attack our body anymore. So it is trying to coat them with the antigen. That is one 
function. Then it is also trying to protect the surfaces, IgA is needed on the surfaces. Then it is also trying to create the memory and, and other uh, such things, IgM is needed, IgG is needed for that function. So body has to do multiple functions and based on those functions it also needs various kind of aminoglobulins. So the class switching is necessary because the heavy chain give those biological functions. Now what happens is uh, very simply the switch site are brought together. So this switch E and switch, let's say switch mu would come together. So I'm going to put this and this together and what would happen to everything in the middle? This would become a loop. So that would mean VDJ and then switch M, switch mu and then C mu, then switch delta then C delta, then the remaining DNA, and then finally switch epsilon, and then C epsilon, and then switch alpha and C alpha. This is the DNA. So this is the DNA loop that formed. So this is what happened. So how did it come together? First of all, the, new, the enzyme that does it, that starts this process is also 8. Remember activation induced deaminase? So that is the enzyme which starts this function. Now when the switch sites are brought together, a part of the switch is left on both sides, but the remaining switch and the remaining intervening DNA, all of it with the immunoglobulin making genes, are removed. So these are removed from here and moved out. So switch mu part of it, remember the rest of the part is here. Si similarly switch epsilon part of it because the rest is here and this, this loop is removed and discarded, it's thrown out. Then these switch sites, the remaining sites are brought together and then enzymes come and they repair this area and they connect it. Now you got the light chain, variable region, not light chain but heavy chain, variable region attached to the epsilon heavy chain that would make IgE and so this would also be repaired out. So we'll finally get to IgE. So this is how the class switching mechanism work. We have switch sites, we have aid enzyme that would connect the switch sites part of a switch side would go out and the DNA loop will be excised out, the remaining will be repaired and the cell would be combined with the new um, uh, immunoglobulin molecule, heavy chain molecule. So that is what concludes our uh, class switching and variable region switching. So let me just now recap it for you.